Hi guys, so today we're going to be creating this um, futuristic menu hover effect. So you can see we have these five links here, and when we hover them, we get this cool hover effect. So the text goes all kind of random letters, quite futuristic, and we get this hover div with these um, four corner borders, uh, which moves to our relevant um, hover div, or ho hover link rather. Um, so yeah, it's a pretty cool effect, I think. Um, just yeah, made using vanilla JavaScript and no libraries or anything. So yeah, let's just jump straight in. Thanks, guys. Okay, guys. So to get started, um, as always, we've got the three usual files. We have an index.html, a style.css file, and an app.js file. Um, we'll go into our index.html first, and we'll just emit some boilerplate code here. Um, zoom in. And then, so the first thing we want to do in our index.html um, is just obviously link to our style.css. So I'm just going to say in the header or head section, we'll say link and we'll say style.css here. And then we also just want to play, say, JavaScript. Um, uh, we'll do a script source at the bottom of the body. So we'll say script source with um, dot forward slash app.js. Okay, and then, so if we come into the actual body next, so. And that's another thing I want to get actually. Let's just get the um, Orbitron font. So there's a Google font called Orbitron, which we're going to be using. So if I just come here, we'll say Orbitron font. Come into Google Fonts here. This is a free font. Now you can either download the file um, or you can just link uh, to it. So I'm just going to link to it here. So you can see I've just selected uh, Orbitron regular 400. So if you come down here, I've just selected this one here, a regular 400. I will copy the link and then we'll place that in the header above our CSS file. So that's the HTML link. And then in the CSS, if we just come to our CSS file here, I'm just going to do an all selector and then we can just copy the uh, CSS rule here as well. So this font family, Orbitron, and it has a fallback of sans serif. So if we just do that now, paste that in here and that should apply the uh, Orbitron font to our whole document. Okay, so now if we come to our body in our HTML, um, let's just first do a div or element with a class of main. And then within this main element, we'll have a div of a class of menu. And then in this menu, um, we will have, uh, well, the first thing we want to do is like our hover div, which is the kind of um, square that's going to follow, um, or it's going to translate to the link that we're hovered over. So it's going to move to that position. And we're going to have we're going to give this hover menu borders in the top left, top right, bottom right, and bottom left uh, areas of the div. So it's like a kind of a nice futuristic hover effect. Um, so let's just do that now. So we'll just say I'd give this div a class of hover double underscore div. And then here, as I said, we're going to have um, we're going to put four divs within this hover div just to get that sort of top left, top right, bottom right, bottom left borders going on that effect. So if we just do this one can have a class of top left. And I'm going to copy this down. Um, and this next one will be a top right. This will be the top right border. And then we'll have a bottom right. And then we'll of course have a bottom left div as well for the bottom left uh, border, corner border. Okay, um, and then under uh, coming out of this um, hover div, what's come out of this, underneath that, we're just going to say an unordered list for actual menu items. Then we'll have a list item. These will be links, so you can like, just say A. I'll just give that, leave the href for the, the actual link as they are, as this for now. Obviously, use whatever links uh, you want to apply uh, to go to the relevant pages. But yeah, we'll just leave this blank for the purpose of this tutorial. And I'll just say home, copy this down. We'll have five links. And we'll just say um, about uh, projects, we'll say blog, and then a contact. Obviously use whatever links you want uh, for, you, for your project. That's it for our HTML. So if I just remove these lines here and let's open this with live server. You can see we have our links in a nice Orbitron font and that's looking good so far. So the next thing I want to do, if we come to our style.css, um, the first thing I want to do is obviously just, um, well, let's just take away this list style. We don't want that for our links. So we'll say list style of none. And then here you can see we have this kind of margin uh, and paddings applied by default. So we want to remove those. So we can just say margin, say zero. 
and then we'll say padding zero as well. That removes the uh, margins and paddings, and we'll say box size and border box. And then we'll also just um, remove the underlines. So we'll say text decoration, uh, none for these links, and that removes the underlining. And um, so the next thing I want to do is if we, I just want to specify some a root variable actually. So we can just say here, uh, we'll say root, uh, and this will just contain our root variables. And I just want to specify a border color here because this is what we're going to be using for our uh, corner borders within our hover div. And we can just give this a color of, um, we'll give it a color of white, but I want to make it slightly transparent. So to do that, we can just, um, one, two, three, that should be, yeah, take that out. Okay, and then we can just bring this opacity down here. That should be okay, that should be enough. Okay, and then, so under here, the next one I want to do, I just want to specify a font size as well. So font size, and I say 0.8 rem, just to make it slightly uh, smaller, the, the, uh, the text, which that might be a bit too small, so 0.9 rem. And then, um, actually, you know what, let's leave it at one rem for now. And then the other thing I want to say here is text transform. And we'll just say uppercase. I want all of our text to be uppercase. I think it looks better. And yeah, so let's do that for now. And then next one I want to do, let's just come under to our HTML. And we'll get to our body as well. And we'll just say a background color of we we'll give it a really dark gray, so 161616. We're going to give our text the color of white as well, just so the links appear white like so. And then the next thing I want to do here, let's target the main element, and we can say position relative. And then we can also just say, um, we'll just say a width of 100% and a height of 100%. And we'll just, sorry, 100 viewport heights, just to fill the, um, the page viewport height um, and what we can do here is actually just say SVH just so this works better on mobile devices it accounts for the smaller uh, 100 viewport heights just so on mobile it appears centered as well or the our menu will so use that just to account for mobile um, iOS devices and then we can just say display uh, we give it a display of flex and then we can say justify content we're using flex to justify the content center, which we can do here. And then as we're using flex box, we can just say align item center as well to center them vertically. Okay, and then, so kind of underneath this, the next thing I want to do is just target our, um, let's just target our UL next. So we'll say UL, we'll say display flex, and that will just make our links go to the, well, appear next to each other in a horizontal fashion. And then we can just say, um, I want to give this a width of 500 pixels. So I say width, width of 500 pixels like so. And then what I want to say here is um, justify content space between. And this will probably give us some space in between our links. You can see we've got a nice bit of space in applied now. So that's looking good. Um, and then I also just want to say, if we just target our menu, I want to give this a position relative. I just want to make this, um, we'll say top, I just want to go uh, minus, let's just say 10 uh, viewport heights. Just so it's not so centered, I think it looks better around there. Okay, so that's that done. And then what I want to do now is if we come to our LI, um, so our list items, Let's uh, display these with flex as well. Actually, let's just see what we're working with for now. Let's just do a border, uh, one pixel solid white. Okay, so there's our list items there. So if we display these with flex, um, again, we'll justify the content to be center. And we'll align items center as well. And then what I want to do is just give these a bit of padding. So say padding of one rem and zero. That just gives it padding vertically, well, at the top and the bottom. And then I want to give these all a width of 20%. So say width of 20%, like so. Okay, so you can see, let's just actually yeah, bring this font size down. We'll say 0.8 rem. 
and that looks a bit better, I guess. Let's, let's go with that for now. Um, okay, and then the next thing I want to do here, so uh, these are all, obviously we're using 20% because we have five links. Obviously 100 divided by five is 20. So that will give us a nice even sizes for our links like so. Okay, and then we can just specify the cursor as being pointer here. We get a nice pointer when we hover our links next. Okay, so now if I just take off, I don't want this border anymore. And then the next thing I want to do, so underneath our link, we can say li hover. And I just want to give this an opacity of 0.7. So it gives us just a slightly, you can see we get that kind of subtle hover effect when we hover our links. It goes slightly um, transparent. And then next one to do, let's just uh, adjust our hover div now. So say hover double underscore div. And we'll say position absolute. And we'll say, give this a width of 20%. Remember, 20%, this is hover div is within our menu, which we specified as being 500 pixels. Um, so, sorry, our UL is 500 pixels. And we also want, um, yeah, that should be fine for now. Uh, da -da -da -da. Yep, yeah, okay, and then next one to do, so with our hover div, say with 50%, let's just give this um, also a height um, of, give it a height of 100%. Let's just give this a border to see what we're working with. Okay, so that's, that's where our div starts, that's looking good. Um, and then the next thing I want to do here is we want to specify a transition because we're going to be translating this with JavaScript or, or animating this rather. And this is just the time it will take to animate. So when we hover a div, it will take 0.5 seconds or half a second for this um, hover div to go or be translated to hover this about link like so. Okay, so that's what that transition is doing. And then we can say, I want the pointer events to be none on this because we don't want to interact with the hover div. We only want to hover, uh, interact with the links. So we can just say pointer event none here. And then we'll also just say, we'll change transform just to optimize the browser to perform the animation on this. And then um, we'll say, um, we'll leave it like that for now. Okay, and then the next thing I want to do is let's just do our borders. So I'll just say top, left we'll say position um, and this will be absolute and we can just say um, top zero left zero we'll do a width of 10 percent we'll do a height of 10 percent as well and then we can just say um, border left so we have a border left option here and we can say one pixel solid and we're going to use the see the border color um, root variable we, we made up here, this border color. So now you'll see if I adjust that, you can see we get that um, link up here or that, that border up here uh, subtly there. And then as this is top left, we want to do a border top as well. So we just say border top like so. And you can see we get that subtle um, small border there. Okay, so I want to copy this down for the top right. So now if we just um, change this to top right, and then here we just obviously change the right positioning. So say right. And what we want to do here as well is to give this a border right. So we say border instead of left, we'll go border right. And there you go, there's our second part. And now we just need to do the bottom right and bottom left next. So we just do that now. So the bottom right, um, that will be obviously bottom zero. So say bottom. And then we just want to say um, border, instead of border top, we'll say border bottom, like so. And then finally for the bottom left, we just want to change this right to be left. And then we just want to change this right here to left as well. And that should be border left, bottom left, sorry. Like so, and there you go, there's our kind of hover div that's made now. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. So now let's move to our JavaScript. And the first thing I want to do in my JavaScript file is just get our hover div. So we'll say const hover div equals document dot query selector. And we'll just say dot hover underscore div. 
Um, then we also want to target our menu, so say const menu equals um, document dot query selector, and we'll just say dot menu. And then we want to target all of our links, so we'll get our links next. So we'll say const links. Now, as there's multiple links, we want to destructure this into an array, and we can just say so. We use a spread operator here to to basically place these into an array that we can iterate. And we can, here we can just say document dot query selector all. And we'll just say, um, we'll just target all of our LI elements. Okay, so we're just targeting those. Uh, next, we want to do, uh, let's just, um, I'll change the spelling there. Let's just console.log links to see that's working. So you see, if we go to our console now, and then here, you can see we get an array of each of our five links, like so. So that's looking good. Now, the next thing I want to do is let's just um, to get this uh, crazy random letter effect when you when you hover the link, it's obviously going to just show a bunch of random letters before it goes back, reverts back to the original string. So to do that, we're just going to create a random letters array. So I'll say const random uh, letters equals and here we're just going to do a string. I'm just going to go across all the letters of my keyboard. So just type them all out. And then what we can do, as this is a string, we have the split function we can use, and then just do an empty string there. And then if I console.log random letters, you should see that we get all of our letters in an individual segment of the array, which we can use to you well, do that hover effect with a bunch of random random jumbled letters. Obviously, you you could put like you know question yeah any kind of any marks in here really put whatever you want. We'll just do that for now. Okay, and you can see yeah, they've all got their own part in the uh, array. So let's move that console log. And now the next thing I want to do, um, the first thing actually, is I want to say menu dot add event listener. I want to listen for um, the mouse enter. So this is when the mouse go hovers over our menu. And here we're just going to say hover div dot class list dot add and we'll add the active class and you'll see why we're doing this in a second I also want to do a similar event listener for the mouse leave events this is when it leaves the menu and then we can just say here remove active and we just need to go back to our style.css and on our hover div I want to specify the opacity to be zero so we don't see it initially but when the hover div is active so I'm going to copy this down we'll say dot active so when the active class is applied we'll say opacity of one so now you'll see when we hover our menu uh, it comes into comes into view okay so that's what that does okay and then the next thing I want to do now is let's just create a class for each of our links so we can get this animation working okay so we'll just say class of link and this will take in a constructor and we're just going to pass in each link element as well as the index as well. And that's, this index will be used to transform the hover div. Okay, so we just want to say this dot L equals the element we pass in. And then we want to say this dot IDX equals the index that we pass in as well. And then we'll say this dot original, uh, well, original string equals L dot inner text. Okay, so just to show you here what we want to do at the bottom. So if I just say, because we've obviously got our links up here, we can say links dot for each link. And we want to pass in the index as well. So we'll just do a parenthesis there. We'll say link. So the actual link we pass in as well as the index. We'll put it into a function and we'll just say new um, link and then we can pass in the link here as well as that index. Okay, so now if we console.log uh, this dot original string, you should see that we have each of our original strings logged to the console now for each instance of our link that we create. Okay, so that's important that we keep so we can revert back to that original string once the hover effect has finalized or finished. Okay, so now let's just go to um, we want to create a random string of, uh, as well. This will be an array. So say random string, and that's going to equal. We can say this 
dot l uh, dot inner text and then we can just say dot split like so okay and that will just split our original string into a random array so if we console dot log uh, this dot random string you can see now each of our strings are logged to the well they just creates an array out of each of the strings okay so now after that we just want to say a variable called, called this dot frame equals zero and you'll see what I'm doing this shortly and then we're going to create um, uh, a, a method called add uh, hover event and we'll call that here and then we'll just state this down here so add hover event okay so what this is going to do this method so the first thing we want to do is just say we want to add an event listener to our uh, each of our links so a mouse enter event so we'll say this dot l dot add event listener we want to listen for a mouse enter so when our mouse hovers over the link and then what we're going to say is we want to transform that hover div okay so say hover div dot style dot transform that should be style okay dot transform and then we go and say equals we do back ticks here we'll say translate x so we want to translate on the x-axis and then we do a template literal here and we'll just say this dot index times 100 and then we can say percent okay and then that should Okay, so this is the add horror event. Um, okay, so let's just um, console.log, see what's going on here. Console.log this.index. See what the link we hover over, uh, we get the index log. So this is the first index, second index, third index, and fourth index. Now, what we want to do here, um, let me just see, we've got our menu. Where's our menu? Okay, there's our menu. So we want to. We've got our hover div. Let me just console.log that. To make sure that is. Okay, then there's our hover div. So equals translate x. And that should be transform, not transform. So now you can see our hover div goes over the relevant link when we hover the link item. So that's what we're doing there. And we have to specify that we're just basically taking that index, times it by 100 for the percentage. So here it's at 0%, then we're moving it 100% to the right, then 200%, 300%, and 400%. And that's how that effect works. So that's looking good. Now the next thing I want to do is we'll just say um, mouse leave as well. Um, actually let's create another method in here we'll just say animate for the time being so say animate and then what we're going to say in this animate because we want to get that now that that random string or that random character effect so to do that um, we're just going to say first um, we'll say if um, so in our animate function we'll say if this dot frame so remember we specified this frame up here we'll say if it's less than 30 then we want to run this effect okay so we'll say we'll do another if statement here as well actually no, we won't for now we'll just do a for loop sorry we'll say for let i equal zero and whilst i is less than this dot random string dot length we'll say uh, i plus plus and then what we want to do, we'll just say this dot random string i. So we're basically we're just going to iterate for our random string and just change the letters to a random character. Train, uh, yeah, change each letter to a random character. So what we can say here equals, we want to use our random letters um, array that we initiated up here. And then we can say here, we want to just um, get a random character from that array. So to do that, we can say math dot floor. Then we'll put that in parentheses, we'll say math.random um, and then we want to just times that by the random letters dot length times random letters dot length like so. 
Okay, and then what we can say here after that, we'll come out of this for loop and we'll just say this dot L dot in a text uh, equals this dot random string, okay, dot join. So once join the array of that random string and put an empty string in there. So um, what we want to do now is when we do the mouse enter, we can just say uh, this dot animate. Okay, and you can see we're getting something going on there, but it looks like it's... Okay, so da -da -da -da, if this dot frame is less than 30... Okay, um, and then what we need to do out of here is we need to request an animation frame as well. So we'll just say... Um, yeah, we'll just do um, join, and then we can say uh, this dot, here yeah, we'll say request animation frame, and we'll just say this dot animate. And we need to bind the this keyword, just to make sure it knows, or JavaScript knows, to initiate this animate within this instance of the link, okay? So now you can see we get that just occurring over and over again, that jumbled letter effect. Okay, so it's looking good. Now, what I want to do is I want, we need to just make this stop after a while. So what I'm going to say is um, this dot frame plus plus. Because I don't want this to go up to 30. So you can see that's what we're doing here. We're saying if this dot frame is less than 30, then process this, otherwise stop. So it gets to 30 and then it stops, okay? And then the next thing I want to do here is I'm also, I think this is too much. I don't want this to be, you know, translating like that too quickly. So what we can do is in this if statement, I'm also going to say if this dot frame mod free equals zero, then we'll run this. And you'll see what this does. So then what we can do is we can put the for loop in within this other if statement. And then we can also apply this, this to elder inner text outside that for loop. And then that should be enough. So now if we come out, you'll see that it's, it slightly slows down the effect. You don't get it so quickly. The letters don't change so much. And then what else you need to do obviously is if it's greater, if the frame is greater than 30, then we want to just go back to our original string. So we'll come out, we'll say else here, and then we'll just say this dot l dot inner text equals this dot original string. So now you can see it goes back to the original string. Okay, but it doesn't work. So what we need to do is also reset the frame when we leave the link. So we can do that now. We'll just say, um, we'll just come up here and we'll just say this dot l dot add event listener. And then we'll listen up for a mouse leave. And then we can just say here, uh, this dot frame equals zero. And then I also just want to set a timeout as well. Actually, that should be enough. Let's just try that. If we come here, you can see now, yeah, we get that effect. And I think that's quite a cool futuristic effect. Um, you get that, you get that. Obviously, it's a, uh, it's um, you get those nice jumbled letters. It's cool to see that. I and mean, when you leave the menu, the uh, hover div goes. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed that, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, any questions, please leave a comment. And yeah, I'll try my best to answer. But yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.